Today we are going to talk about a spiritual illness that is so prevalent in our society that it is even hard to identify it as a spiritual illness anymore. It is so prevalent that many people think this is a goal to achieve, to impress other people with what we have or with our qualities. Our, our social, social media, media and billboards are filled with a lot of vain glory, which according to the teaching of the Orthodox Church is one of the worst spiritual illnesses. So from the beginning, I'm going to tell you that this might be something new for you, maybe not, <laughs> and it might require a profound change of mind to see this not something that is desirable, but something that is affecting my life and my relationships with God, with the people around me, with the creation of God, and even with myself. Now, I want to tell you from the very beginning that <clears throat> this spiritual illness is, again, a virtue given to us by God that was twisted by the devil within us to transform it into a passion. As St. Maximus the Confessor would say, vain glory, not glory, is evil. Because we are created by God in his image and we are designed by God to become his likeness. We were created to be the glory of God. According to the theologians of the Orthodox Church, this image of God, Father Eugene Pentuch would say in his book, Jesus the Messiah, that the Hebrew word for image of God is a word that could, could be also used for statue, for rep representative. You know, in the old times, and until today, you know, when the Americans went on the moon, what did they put on the moon? The American flag, right? Whomever reached the North Pole or the South Pole, they put the flag of their country. Because that's what represents us. Now, everybody knows that the Americans went to the moon. <laughs> because the flag represents us. In the same way, God planted us on earth as his flag, as his image as his representation to be his glory his representatives in this world god gave us glory and we are glorious each of us we are unique thank god the modern science came to confirm that indeed every single human being is unique in body, psychology, emotions, feelings, spirit, everything is unique about every human being. What else could be more glorious than that? But guess what? For most of us, that's not enough. And it is not enough because we didn't do it. It was given to us. And instead of accepting God's great gift of who I am, we try to come up with a different image that we think is better. It is so interesting and sad to see how many most artists, singers, especially singers, you know, it's so interesting to see their uh, um, involution. <laughs> when they come out, there's most of them, you know, you can see that they are singing because it comes from the heart. They are young, they are innocent, and they just want to sing. And they come up, you know, with beautiful music, and everybody, everybody likes them. And then they hire a manager to create an image for themselves. Uh, you know, you don't have the right haircut, you don't have the right clothes, and they start to change them. In five, ten years, they are a different person whom most of the time ends up in deep depression, using drugs, and you name it, because they are empty. Because they are not who they were created to be anymore. And they cannot find, find joy in anything. Even if they have huge success, 
they feel so fake and empty because they are. Because they listened to that manager who wanted to transform them into somebody else. Instead of rejoicing, God gave me this gift of singing. I tried to just be myself, nobody else. So according to, <clears throat> first of all, according to the teaching of the Lord, in the Gospel of, of John, the Lord says, how can you believe who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from the only God? He was telling the Pharisees that you're seeking honor from one another in, instead of seeking the glory that comes, the honor, the glory that comes from the only God. According to the teaching of the church, there are two kinds of vain glory. The first kind, in, according to the first kind, people become vainglorious because of our real or supposed beauty of the body, voice, clothing, perfumes, jewels, dexterity, or because of our possessions. St. Maximus the Confessor would say that vainglory and avarice produ produce each other. So many people try to gain more to have more possessions because they think that that's who they are and that becomes their image. And they want to impress other people with, with what they have. And this is how vainglory and avarice produce each other. Or, or people, people who could, could be vainglorious because of their intellectual qualities. I'm so smart, I know so much. <laughs> I know so much theology. <laughs> People could become very vainglorious also because of the theology they know. <laughs> anything, anything. According to the teaching of the church, we could become vainglorious, and this is the second kind, because of our virtues or because of our as ascesis, you know, spiritual struggles. You know, I'm praying so much, I'm fasting so much. Look at me. <laughs> anything. We could become vainglorious because of anything. St. John Climacus says that the spirit of vainglory rejoices at the sight of increasing virtue. The spirit of vainglory rejoices at the sight of increasing virtue. Because the spirit of vainglory knows that when someone tries through his own or her own strength to fast and to pray and to become more like God, then that person becomes vainglorious. We should not forget that Lucifer was a very high-ranking angel. And that's why, that's why he fell. So what are the effects of vainglory in our lives? As I was saying earlier, it is an illness because it makes us suffer. It makes us suffer in our relationship with God because ultimately when we are vainglorious, we do not recognize God as good and, and as creating me as I need to be. No, I need to uh, uh, come up you know, with a different image that, than what God has given me. So I'm replacing God with myself. Also, it affects our relationship. It deeply affects our relationship with other people. Have you ever been around a very vainglorious person? How do you feel in the presence of such a person? Do you feel good? Do you feel loved? Do you feel embraced? How do you feel? Hmm? Very small, right? Because they are so big. <laughs> That's how other people feel when we are vainglorious. That's how we make them feel. Maya Angelou used to say that people will forget what you did for them, but they will never forget how you, how you made them feel. So it is vainglory is deeply affecting our relationships with the people around us also because in this desire to acquire more and to impress the people around us, we are taking from other people. 
And it deeply affects our relationship with the creation of God because instead of looking after the creation of God, we are exploiting the creation of God in order to acquire and to impress. <laughs> and last but not least, it deeply affects our relationship with ourselves. St. John the, Sol the Solitary used to say, Wretch that I am, God created me free and upon me weighs the dominion of many people since by desiring to please everyone, I'm everyone's slave. God made me free. <laughs> and so many people become enslaved, we become enslaved when we try to please other people or when we try to gain something thinking that I'm going to impress the people. And in the end, what do we do? We enslave ourselves in, instead of keeping our freedom and just being joyful and thankful for what we have. We lose our joy and our freedom because of vainglory. Vainglory is also the source of the illusions of the illusions of the mind, Evagrius would say. Have you seen very vainglorious people, you know, who literally lose their mind? They have moments of sanity and moments of insanity when they think they are semi-gods and, you know, from the Roman emperors to the superstars. Many of them, they, they, they lose it. <laughs> it's obvious that they are delusional in how they see themselves. And all of us, when we are affected by vainglory, we experience moments of delusion when we don't know who we really are and we think that we are somebody else or we desire to become <laughs> and it creates delusions of the mind which if not kept under check and if we not come back to reality could produce really uh, 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 could produce mental illnesses so what could we do to be healed of Vain glory. This is a very subtle spiritual illness. This is why the Holy Fathers recommend, first of all, to know this passion very well. A detailed knowledge of this passion is the first step towards healing. When we identify signs of vainglory within us to be able to know, yeah, this is what it is. It is vainglory. And this is an illness. It's not something to be desired. Yes, the world might, tell, might be telling me that, you know, if you become this, you know, you're going to be so great. No, that's an illness. <laughs> that's that's vainglory. The second recommendation of the Holy Fathers is to, for the healing of, of vain glory, is to literally love of being to be dishonored. The beginning of freedom from vain glory is love of being dishonored, St. John Climacus would say. Now, this really goes against the grain of what the world is telling us. What do you mean to love to be dishonored? <laughs> God allows providential circumstances in our life. When out of nowhere, out of the blue, somebody humiliates us. And what do we do? How could you tell that to me? <laughs> Instead of, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing this in my life. Thank you for healing me of vain glory. Once a priest was saying, a priest was, you know, who became very famous, he was invited all over the place, you know, to give speeches, and he, he was saying, you know, very honestly that he was praying for a good humiliation every day <laughs> because he didn't want to become vainglorious. <laughs> so to reach the point of loving, of being dishonored, and to know that this is healing me, and to see humiliations as providential remedies. Also, when we think that we did something good, we did something great, to remember the words of the Lord 
towards his disciples in the Gospel of Luke when he says, So likewise you, when you have done all of those things which you are commanded, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. Not to think, wow, look at me what I built, look at me what I did. I just did what I was called to do. <laughs> Glory to God. St. John Climacus would say that another way of being healed of vainglory is that when our praisers begin to praise us, to let us briefly call to mind the multitude of our sins and we shall find ourselves unworthy of what is said or done in our honor. When somebody praises us, immediately to bring to mind our greatest sins that we know are within us and to reestablish the balance within us so that we don't get puffed up. <laughs> I know who I am. I'm a sinner and the greatest of sinners, as St. Paul would say. Last but not least, prayer. Only the grace of God can heal us of any spiritual illness and especially vain glory. This is a very subtle one because, as I said, we're designed for glory. But then the devil introduced the virus of vainglory. <laughs> so only watchfulness, God coming within us and healing us and giving us his watchfulness can heal us and make us aware of what's going on and heal us of this desire to acquire vain glory. And I'm going to end with a quote from St. John Climacus, who used to say that as fire does not give birth to snow, so those who seek honor here on earth will not enjoy it there in heaven. If we are seeking honor here on earth, we'll not enjoy it in heaven. Either here or there. And it's our choice. And if you want to be known by God, be unknown by man. Run away from vain glory and from people praising us. Because if we become known to man, we are unknown by God. Because God is humble. And if we want to be with him and like him, we need to stay in humility.